I celebrate you, you celebrate me. With a hand in hand, we are walking in our destiny. Come on, honey, let me show you. Yeah, yeah. yeah celebration time. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's a celebration. Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining us. It is a great day to be alive here on the Tammy Tuff Show. You know, I want you to understand on this morning that God is a healer. You know, he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ever ask or think. All you have to do is simply trust and believe him. How do I know that? Because he's restored my mind. He's restored my health. Even as you're listening to me, the enemy is trying to fight me with my voice, with my sciences, but the devil is a liar. So I just want you on today to just decree and declare this with me. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. You know what? You just got to hold on to it and know that although you may have pains in your body, that God will heal you in Jesus name. Now my guest on this morning can tell you from his testimony, Mr. Earl Gillespie, that God is a healer. God is a healer. He is definitely a healer. Mm -hmm. Now in 2004, you were diagnosed with cancer, correct? Correct. What was going on in your mind Whew. when that happened? Yeah, I was taken to a place where I really didn't want to be. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of frustration, there was a lot of confusion, there was a lot of darkness. Uh, and I was looking for something to reach out and grab a hold to. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like the more I tried to uh, find God, the more I was sort of driven away from Him mm -hmm. by doubt and confusion. You know, you would have people telling you uh, uh, that you, and you begin to expect things to happen a certain way. This is what I later on learned that we were trying to define and put limitations on how God worked. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that I had to learn about my healing was to understand how God worked. And how does he work? God works through the spiritual nature of man. He has to touch your spirit. He has mm -hmm. to get your spirit in shape. I mean, your mind, you see, a lot of times we are praying for God to do things mm -hmm. for the natural aspect, and we ought to be dwelling on the spiritual aspects of humanity. Mm -hmm. David, you will find that when he prayed, a lot of times he prayed for peace. Yes. Solomon, he prayed for wisdom. Yes. We get away from praying for the fruits of the spirit, the That's things it. that God has asked us. We begin to focus on, Lord, do this, do this, do this, and sometimes we forget. You know, we just like a little child coming to his father. Jesus told his disciples when you pray, uh, I'm getting carried away. Uh, when you pray, let God have his way. When you, <laughs> that when, that when, that when you pray, you know, you address the father as our father. Yes. And you have a need. God know your needs. Mm -hmm. God know the situation. I had to accept the fact that God knew my needs, my condition, and my situation before I even opened my mouth. Yes. Yes. And when I open my mouth, it's not to beg him to do this for me because he sees it just as a father, a child coming to his father. Yes. And father know, and father understand, if you need a pair of shoes, your father know that. He already way. knows it. He know it. Yeah. If you need something on the table, he know yeah. it. So why do you have to beg him? That was the thing that I had to learn. Stop begging God and accept. Yes. What he is doing, the scripture says, and Jesus said, Pray for our Father. Okay, I'm talking to my Father now, which is in heaven. How your name is great would be that name. What? Your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Let your will be done. That's the acceptance right there. Yeah. We can get to that point. Just let your will be his done. His will, in every situation, his will, his will. for our lives. Mm -hmm. We're trying to fix situations that he's already, you know, he's already done everything he's ever going to do for us. We just have to accept it. So this cancer. You realize that, okay, I have to grab hold to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling in your body? Now? Mm -hmm. It don't bother me. I don't, I don't worry about it. I don't, I gave what it to about God. when people begin to say, well, you know, do you really think God is going to heal you? What would you respond? What would I respond? Nowadays, I re before then, it would take and depress me. Uh -huh. Nowadays, I can say, like the three Hebrew boys Come said, on. Whether God heals me or, or not, not. <laughs> he is still God. Yes. Healing is not a prerequisite mm -hmm. of whether God is God or not. Yes. 
And if I accept that, then God will begin to work. He not will be. He began to work and manifest himself in my life. Let's go back a little bit. Okay. Because we, you know that there are a lot of people uh, now that are getting diagnosis of cancer. Mm -hmm. It's like everything that we eat, you hear on television, in the media, is causes a certain form of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, the depressive state. There are people who are in the state of depression that are watching you even right now. Mm -hmm. How do they come out of that? I know you're saying, we well, you have to get into the Word of God, but see, everyone doesn't believe the God that we serve. True. That's why I wrote down a lot of uh, this information in a book called My Search for yes. the Real God. The Real God. Because they put, I'm going to use the word they, I hope I can get away with That's it. That's perfectly fine. They are teaching us today, a lot of times, a polluted gospel that do not allow for us to take advantage of the joy and the peace that Christ or uh, Jesus or God, whoever, however we call it, has offered us. Yes. And this is the first thing that we must search for is peace and understanding. You go to church a lot of days and you leave every, when I when I went to church, on many times when mm -hmm. I went to church, with my situation and my condition, mm -hmm. I left there depressed. Mm -hmm. Because for one of the things I was told that God wanted to do this and God was going to do this and that and all this type of stuff. And you I, believed it. And I believed it. Mm -hmm. And I was depressed. I would go home depressed. I would go to sleep at night. I'm, I'm begging God, Lord, do, do, heal me, do something, do this, do, 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 do. and not understanding, not accepting, as you said earlier, that God has already done these things for us. Yes. He blessed us in the book of Genesis. Yes. He blessed man. All we have to do is to accept it. If we want that peace, we have to accept it. He gave it to us. He, I mean, he gave Jesus gave us an example. He said, consider the fowls of the uh, birds yes. in the air. Okay, visualize this. Here's a bird sitting in a tree there. God is taking care of him. God is blessing him with all of the things that he need, right? Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that he got to do. Now, he can sit there in that tree and look out there and see those berries yes, on that sir. vine and, and pray for God to bring those berries to him and put them in his mouth. Yes. Or he can work his wings yes. and fly. He has to move. He got to move. He we have to move. We have to uh, uh, adjust our thinking rather than looking for God to take it and just do this and lift it up. Accept what God has to offer. Once you accept that, whether he is, can be able to say, whether God heals me or not, I'm not going to say, God, you got to heal me. No, whether he heals me or not, that's how my healing comes. Yes. That's how my joy comes. Yes. It's being able to say, whether God do this or not, he yes. is still God. He's still God. It doesn't matter or not because I know even with my lifestyle, if I die today, I know where I'm going. It's a place called heaven. I'm being blessed. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Attention Mississippi and surrounding areas. It's the $39 vehicle acquisition event at Car City Used Car Superstore in Tupelo. If you've got just $39 to put down, you can take over payments as low as $79 a month and drive the vehicle of your dreams today during our grand opening celebration. Our big selection meets a price and payment to fit any budget. Every make, every model with guaranteed credit approval. We say yes. You're approved. Drive away today. $39 down and take over payments as low as $79 a month at Car City in Tupelo. Where you come first. back and if you just join us this morning I'm here with author minister Mr. Earl Gillespie of my search for the real God you know what I'm, I'm so enjoying this moment with you because it's important that we sit down and research and, and, and you know get an intimate relationship with the God that we serve not who the world says but the true and living God now I'm reading this for um, you know the second time where it says that uh, my journey filled with despair and desperation came to a screen halt in 2009. Mm -hmm. What happened? In 2009, I realized that the uh, cancer had came back mm -hmm. and it was uh, more aggressive than it was at first. Now, from the first time up until this point, I have been rejoicing in the fact that uh, I had uh, uh, overcome my affliction. Yes. And remember that I was rejoicing in the fact that I had overcome mm -hmm. this. Now, in 2009, and with the help of my brother, I was, I'm going to repeat myself again here, with the help of my 
brother, yes. I was rejoicing in the fact that I had overcome my affliction. And in 2009, I got a notice that he had came back. Now, this was a point where I was supposed to become very doubtful mm -hmm. of whether or not God was dealing with me or working with me or what. My brother was there to offer me the encouragement that I needed mm -hmm. to go through this. And through this, uh, I still believe that, well, yes, God didn't forsake me. Mm -hmm. And all of the faith that I had mustered and built up came to a screeching halt then at that point. You see, this is how the devil will work with you. Yes. Now, I, I, I went through my radiation treatments, and I'm still in doubt now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 now. Then, the day after the radiation treatment was complete, my brother, my spiritual guide, mm -hmm. died. My younger brother just died. How did you feel? I was really, I was like a, a, a ship out on the ocean there that don't have a crew. I was just drifting, I was just drifting and tossed about, and I was looking for a, a something to reach out and grab a hold to, and I could not find that message. I could not find understanding uh, from in the church. I couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. Because we had got caught up in teaching that, uh, 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 we were teaching the Santa Claus religion. That's good. We were teaching the Santa Claus religion, mm -hmm. and there were people all around us that were dying, mm -hmm. that were suffering from disease and dying, and, 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 and nobody was addressing that issue. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the people in the church were... It's okay. It's okay. Let God have his way. They were, were continued... That's the devil trying to fight this testimony. Come on. They here. were continued with addressing that 99% without that one sheep that was lost. gone astray or lost. They wasn't concerned about him. They were concerned about the 99. Mm -hmm. Jesus placed his emphasis upon that one sheep. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people that are suffering from that because things happen in their life. They grew up in the church. And things happen in their life that they can't explain based upon what they've been taught. It shatters their faith. Mm -hmm. And what I had to learn through that, God, I asked God to teach me. I stopped praying for anything. Mm -hmm. I did, when I got up in the morning, the first thing I was ask God, Lord, give me understanding. I opened the Bible. Lord, teach me. I, 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 I'm not going to pray for, Lord, thank you for giving me another day. Thank you for teaching me. Give me understanding. Mm -hmm. Help me to understand. Lord, I want to understand what's going on. I want to understand you. Teach me, Lord. Yeah. And you'd be surprised at the revelations that I began to get. See, we place a lot of emphasis upon uh, life down here on earth. Mm -hmm. We are enjoying this trip mm -hmm. in a flawed vehicle, mm -hmm. and we don't want it to end. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I'm going away, and I'm coming back for you. Yes. That's why I am, that he may be also. And we also know from studying the scripture that to die is to what? Live again. To live again, that is to be with Christ. So we place these restrictions we are, and, and stuff up on dying. We are afraid of it. We have to get, we get to the point where we no longer fear dying. That's what Jesus was trying to teach us. Because to be absent, you know, in the body is to be, to be present with the Lord. So what can be more beautiful than that? Yeah. But like you said, I think when, when uh, devastation happens in life, instead of us running to God, we run from we're him. away from him. Why is that? Oh, we become anger, you know, mm -hmm. really angry with him. Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? Did you not feel that way? You've gotten this diagnosed in 2009. Your brother dies. I mean, are you feeling idle? At that point, I wanted to go. Why are you doing this? I wanted to question him. Mm -hmm. And they, remember, what did Job's friends do? Mm. They began to question Job, and they began to blame the things that were happening to yes. Job. They blamed it on God. Yes. And God got upset with them because they were blaming all this stuff on God. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what happened. We blame things on God. There are two things that I learned in my struggle. That from the book of Ecclesiastes, there was time and chance. Mm -hmm. One or the other is going to take us out of here. Time or chance. We either, and, and, and once I accept that, you, we stop blaming God for when the, uh, the lady that uh, was driving down the highway and the drunk come out and crashed into a car and the baby flew through the window and the people told her, well, God knows what he's doing. Why do you want to blame that on God? <laughs> it's just natural. You know, people that are in the natural, that's, it's easier versus to say, God, why? 
Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? Give me revelation. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me give an me, understanding me, yeah. of mm -hmm. why am I going through this? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to learn? Is this supposed to strengthen me? Show me how I can be sustained through this perplexity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 things that we should pray for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But instead, it's easier to say, well, God allowed this. He does allow certain things to happen. He allowed it, but he don't cause it, make it happen. Blame the drunk. Yes. See, it, it's not what God do, it's how God do things. Mm -hmm. Can I, I, let me see if I can get this in here right quick, and I'm going to shut up a little bit. No, I don't want you to shut up, because we're having a wonderful time here. Remember, remember when, remember when, when now, now here, here Jesus, the Son of God, mm -hmm. God went through all of the process and the procedures to bring forth his son through the birth of a virgin girl, right? Yes. Okay, now here, Herod, the king, mm -hmm. said, I'm going to kill Every newborn child, because mm -hmm. these they looking for a Messiah. Male. Now, yes. why didn't God just say, Herod, you dead? But what did he do? It's how God worked. He sent an angel to Joseph and said, Joseph, I want you to take my only begotten son mm -hmm. and flee to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Quit your job. Mm -hmm. Run to Egypt mm -hmm. and save my son's life. Mm -hmm. He gave him specific instructions. Mm -hmm. And Joseph did not have time to think about it or debate. He had to go. He went. He go. He went. And this is what we need to look at. It's, it's not so much. God could have done this. He, yeah, the easiest way would have been what? Take him out. Take Herod out. That would have been the easiest way. And you say, well, okay. Now, Herod could have died in his sleep tonight and would have all been over with. Mm -hmm. But there was a reason for that. There was a message in that. That message transcends down to us today. Yes. We need to look at that. It's not what God can do. Mm -hmm. It's how God works. How he works. How he works. He has his own peculiarities. Why he did it that way, mm -hmm. hey, that's beyond, maybe beyond my understanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, why do he, he could have did the children's ears a little bit different, mm -hmm. but he chose to do it that way. It's how God works. That's mm -hmm. what we need to look at. How he works. Even in our own situations, we have to begin to really look at how he works. You know, if he allows, what is it, diabetes, mm -hmm. cancer, or whatever situation you may be going through is how he works to mm -hmm. develop sometimes character in us, mm -hmm. uh, humility in us. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are a lot of things that he allows not to take us out, but to strengthen, but us, to strengthen us, but to bring us closer to mm -hmm. him. And mm -hmm. I look at you today, and, and I think of how you were diagnosed with cancer. Okay, God healed you. Then, oh my goodness, it comes back again. Mm -hmm. And now today, you're even stronger. It's if your faith is, is on another level. It's so, <laughs> how, how do you describe your faith? How do I describe I, I, How do I describe my faith? Is that I guess it, I had to find I had to find God. Mm -hmm. I had to find a God that I says in my book that would pro uh, provide me with the things that I needed. Mm -hmm. I didn't need a God to provide me with a, a, a new, brand new car. Mm -hmm. I could go buy one. Because at that point, you needed a healer. I needed a healer. You needed it, inner peace. It, it, it's not so much as I needed a healer because that's a natural uh, 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 requirement that mm -hmm. I'm placing on God. I needed what you just said peace. was peace. Beyond your understanding. I needed that peace. Mm -hmm. I needed that peace. I needed the peace so that I could lay down at night without worrying and crying mm -hmm. and wake up the next morning without worrying and crying. Mm -hmm. I needed that peace that I could go through the whole day without saying, oh, God, you gonna do this for me? You're gonna, you know, just like a little child being in his father, you know, hey, you gonna buy me a pair of shoes, but I know you need some shoes, boy, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I needed that peace that was in that contentment, that trust in God that I could put it in his hands and that what is through the death of my family. Family members, whatever happened, mm -hmm. if I could just say whatever happens, it doesn't matter because it's in your hands. Mm -hmm. Then, as I close my book, I will, yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, of death. I will fear no evil mm -hmm. because thou art with me. Mm -hmm. And what the rod and the staff, they comfort me. I remember that as a little kid. That was one of the very first um, scriptures that I had to recite and learn. And we, it was engraved in my read, heart. And sometimes we have to go back and reread oh, yeah. these scriptures and look at them for what they are really saying. Yeah. We are told one thing sometimes about these scriptures, but we, when you go back and get a deeper understanding, that's where I got my peace from, going back and getting a deeper understanding of God. Spending the quality time with God. With God. You know, I know you're sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, do I really know God the way that I 
should. Well, it's that time, it's that hour for you to go forward. But more importantly, you got to pick up the Word of God. You got to read it. You got to ask Him for revelational knowledge. He will do it. We'll be right back. All right, listen to this. My search for the real God. Real God. How did you find him? I found him by studying his word, going back and rereading what I had already read. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would take one verse and just read that verse before I go to bed at night and meditate on it and pray and ask God to open up my understanding on just that one verse before I proceed to the next verse. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it seems like by the time I would wake up that morning, some things would come to me in dreams, it seems like. But by the time I wake up the next morning, I would have a deeper understanding mm -hmm. of that verse. Mm -hmm. It's just like there are a lot of verses we read, we take uh, surgically removes certain scriptures because they sound good. Yeah. And we throw them out there at people. Mm -hmm. And it creates a false illusion. It creates a state of uh, unbelievability in the God that we are trying to project. Mm -hmm. It's just like, if I can go here and uh, say this, that is, uh, we like to use the scripture. David said, I have been... Uh, Young, I'm gonna quote this. And yes. I, I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seeds beg for bread. That's good, but we must be careful how we take and use that also, so that we don't offend somebody that mm -hmm. is struggling or suffering. Because mm -hmm. Jesus said, hey, "I saw a poor man. He was so poor that he was begging for crumbs from the rich man's table, mm -hmm. and this poor man was a righteous man." Mm -hmm. So where David said he had not seen one. Jesus said he saw one. Mm -hmm. So we must balance those two. Scriptures. I think when you think about that, um, it's, it's one of those scriptures that I use. Mm -hmm. I, I've used in the past. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I was going through something, mm -hmm. I had to really decree and declare over my life that Tammy God is going to provide for you. He's yeah. your Jehovah Jireh. He's going to provide. And then, so I had to use that scripture as a means to empower, to motivate, to mm -hmm. encourage me to say, guess what, Tammy? I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Are you righteous? Guess what? Your God is not going to forsake you. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask this question because uh, many times when people are sick with afflictions or in their body they're going through whether it's cancer diabetes or whatever the case may be um you're told to find a scripture for your situation in the word of god mm -hmm. were you decreeing and declaring scriptures over your body when you were going through that process no why because i gave my body to god mm -hmm. i was looking for spiritual enlightenment mm -hmm. i gave out of my healing my blessings came through searching for spiritual enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness, and he'll take care of all of the rest. Mm -hmm. That's why I was operating from. I had to forget about this. Mm -hmm. The same as now, I forgot about it. I go to the doctor. The first thing they say, well, you just, I, look, I don't want to know what your test results are. Mm -hmm. Don't even bother about telling me that. Because whatever life situation is, God is in control of it. Once we can accept that, God knows, God sees it's in control. It's either going to, it can make us be a better person. We are here to do a work. Mm -hmm. That's the key issue. Why are we here? Are we here to enjoy the trip? Mm -hmm. Are we here to do a job? We are here to do a job. There are some things that will test us. Mm -hmm. It may be losing our children. It's a test. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we withstand that test? Mm -hmm. You have a greater good in life to do if you can stand the test. Job, what? I mean, we think it's, it seems kind of strange. He lost all of his children. He lost everything. He lost everything he had. But God restored. And his wife said, well, hey, why don't you cuss God and die? But he did not lose his faith. He held on to it. Mm -hmm. He questioned God. He had a conversation with God. And late at night, sometimes you may want to have a conversation mm -hmm. with God. But the thing is that you are searching for is spiritual enlightenment. Mm -hmm. If you can get that spiritual peace, then it seems like that's where your healing began. Okay, you said spiritual uh, inner peace. Someone right now that's watching you is, is lying in the bed, and they're just like, they got in that doctor's report, their hands are up. I don't know what to do. Speak to their heart right now to encourage them to hold on to God's unchanging hand. 
if you're in that situation where you, uh, you as, as we would say, your back is up against the wall and there's nothing you can do, yes, accept that position that there is nothing you can do, but there is something that God can do for you. You need to reach out and find God, not the God that is that you might be looking for to do something spectacular for you, but that God that will speak peace to your soul, that will speak peace to your heart. You have to accept that Christ is the answer to what Whatever your solution is, that does not mean that you're going to get up out of that bed and fly away or run around the house again. It might mean that you've got to accept that Christ is the answer and that if you have to leave this world, it is to be with him. One of the things that messes with people's mind is, and I heard a preacher say this, is that if we can get to that point in our life where we can say this, you would be surprised at the flood of relief that you would have that would come over you. And this preacher made a statement. He said, I I hope God will come back tomorrow and just mess up all of my plans. <laughs> so the question is, are you afraid of meeting God? The question I like to pose, do you really believe in God? And if you believe in him, then put your trust in him that everything, everything is going to, not just natural things, spiritually, put your spiritual trust in him that everything is going to be what? All right. If you trust him, believe in him. Amen. Believe in him. That's all we can do. Whatever, whatever we feel, whatever we want, whatever we desire, we just cannot live here forever. We have to accept the fact that one day we are going to have to meet our God. And whether, if it's soon, if I have to meet God tomorrow, I, I want to be ready for it. If it's today. But in the meantime, I want to enjoy this moment sitting here with my Sister. Sister. <laughs> Could be your daughter. <laughs> Could be. I mean, I want to enjoy this moment to the fullness and yes. thank God for giving me this opportunity. Amen. But trust in God. Not looking for God. Well, I want you to do this. Let God, just let, let God have his way in your heart. Yes. yes. Spiritual healing is the first step of natural healing. We must get back to dealing with the spiritual aspect of life. You want amen. Amen. If someone is watching right now and wants to get a copy of your book, My Search for the Real God, how can they purchase a copy today? You can Google it and you can find it on the internet, but the best way to get it, the quickest way to get it, is go to our website, www.prophecyandrevelations.org. You will find a book section there, and you can order the book there. That's www.prophecyandrevelations.org, and log on to the book section. You'll find it there. Amen. Well, it's been a pleasure and an honor to sit on set with you. I thank God for you. I thank God for, you know, your testimony of, of letting others know that he is truly a healer. You know, not one time, but two times. If, if he does it once, he'll do it again. And we learn from each one of those events. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. As we're ending on this morning, I simply want to just encourage you to hold on. As my grandmother would say, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. I remember that song. Feel, say the next verse. Feel, feel your hopes on things eternal. You want to make me sing. <laughs> <laughs> things on eternal. Mm -hmm. I mean, those. sometimes you have to go back to the root of everything. We don't want to go back to those spirituals, but they had life. They had life. They brought liberty. They brought liberty. Those bondages. Everything was broken, those they strongholds. Had, they had more meaning than some of the songs yes. that we sing today. Yes, you know, we, we want to be so contemporary, but I tell you what, if you could just get back in that prayer closet and begin to sing some of those songs that you know, that you know, that God will hear you. I love you all so very much. God bless you. Know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is your day of liberty. God has already done everything he's going to do for you. Receive your healing on today. In Jesus' name, be blessed.